Welcome back to another episode of Talking with the Greats here at Guitar Talk with Todd. Here is my interview with Dion from a couple years back. Dion is an all-time music legend. He was at Ground Zero when rock and roll was born, and he is still putting out the best music of his life in 2023. So thank you so much for a great interview, Dion. It was a real honor for me to speak with you. Please hit that subscribe button and enjoy my interview with the legendary Dion. So, Dion, let's go back and talk about your first memories of getting uh, bit by the music bug, if you will. <laughs> like, what are your first memories of music? Well, <laughs> you know, it, it's a funny bit, but, uh, you, you know, I, I, I had some records by Burl Ives that my father bought. So, I kind of... It was kind of folk oriented and guitar, and I just love the sound of it and the communication of it, you know? Yeah. But then when I heard Hank Williams at the age of maybe nine or ten sing Honky Tonk Blues, uh, I remember catching, I don't know how the radio station, because I'm from the Bronx. Maybe for Elvis Presley, who lived in Memphis, this wouldn't be a stretch. But for an Italian kid from the Bronx, uh, hooking up to uh, Hank Williams. Yeah. uh, You know, singing Honky Tonk Blues. uh, There was a a radio station. um, It was called the Don Larkin Show. It came out of Newark. It was a country show. Okay. And I found out later. And I I lived in this railroad apartment. And one Sunday, I heard this music coming out of, you know, the back room. And I said, what the? And I, I ran back there. And I, I, I've never been the same since. I, I ran up to Fordham Road in the Bronx, Cousins Record Store. And asked Lou Cicchetti, who owned that store, I heard a song called Honky Tonk Blues by Hank Williams. Who is this guy? And I, he played me one record he had. I think it was Moving On Over or something. And, and, and from there, I struck up a friendship with this guy. And he would call me every time I bought all Hank Williams records. Oh, wow. Every, I, I knew about 45 Hank Williams songs <laughs> by the age of 13. Wow. Also, what compounded that was I heard Jimmy Reed. And that blew my mind apart. And when I heard Jimmy Reed, uh, you know, today I could say I wanted to communicate like Hank Williams and groove like Jimmy Reed. So if you put country music and the and blues together, you had rock and roll. You know, it would come out in a in a major key. Yeah. But that is maybe my foundation, and you could throw a little of uh, John Lee Hooker in there. You know, boogie woogie. Uh, and you know, that's where I got the Wanderer and Ruby Baby, and even Run Around Sue is a cleverly disguised blues song. Yeah. But that that was my foundation. Well, that's great, Dion, and I think you just summed it up too. I mean, you've always had a deep love for the city and that comes out in your music. I know you've said basically your country and the blues filtered through the Bronx. Am I correct about that? Yeah, I always say, uh, you know, my music is black music filtered through an Italian neighborhood or the Bronx, and it comes out with an attitude, yo. Yeah, right. But, you know, the thing is that I I was so into the, the music uh, we're talking about 
American Roots music. That uh, we were singing. Annie had a baby on the corner. You know, you you, you know that song. Oh yeah, sure. Okay, so all, all those do up blues songs but when we got down to the company they they gave us uh stuff i didn't really want to sing right i mean it really wasn't but i was so wanted to have a record career or you know i was 17 so back to my neighborhood and i recruited three guys that listened to a lot of you know early doo-wop whether it was the cleft tones or the harp tones and uh the channels and and we we started saying we went down and we put together i wonder why and uh i usually tell everybody that uh We'd go down to the Apollo Theater and listen to Big Al Sears and uh, King Curtis and Ray Price. So when, you know, the beginning of I Wonder Why, if you ever heard it, is really, we were trying to, we were trying to imitate horns, you know. Right. You know, like dun 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 You know, we were trying to imitate those guys. Yeah. Even Ruby, even Ruby Baby and the Wander and Run Around Sue had the horn parts. Right. Of the Apollo Theater, the hey, hey. Bum, da, da, it was like that, 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 da, 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 da. Was, they would play people off stage and Ruby Baby's like, da, 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 da. Ruby, Ruby, Ruby Baby. They were all horn parts. The Wanderer has a horn part behind it. Da, la, 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 la. Ah, da, right. la, la. You could hear the horn parts I was writing. I, yeah. We didn't know how to play horns, but I gave them to the group. So it was all like blues horn parts. <laughs> right. <laughs> so so that is that is the bedrock of uh, where I was coming from. So you're one of the pioneers of rock and roll, without a doubt. But what's amazing and what sets you apart from other people that came out at the same time that you did is that you're still putting out new music now that sounds just as fresh and inspired as ever. I mean, that's just unbelievable and just so great to see. Yeah, I, it's just, you know, it's crazy. At my age, uh, I, I thought, I, I don't know, I, I don't know how to, it, it, I just feel more relevant and creative than ever. It just comes down on me. It comes, uh, it's it's like Bob Dylan says, I feel like I'm under the wellspring of creativity. Right. <laughs> or, or I feel like I'm under the spout where the glory comes out. And it just, I, I can't help it. Uh, the songs come out of the blue. I can't stop them. So I just go with it. You know, I lean into it and I, like Tank Full of Blues. I should I should have did it as a tagline on every uh, verse, but the line came to me, I got a woman who really wants me and another who wants me gone. And I right. thought, how come nobody ever wrote that before? Right. <laughs> right, you well, would think say, they would have. <laughs> yeah, so I should I should have tagged every verse with it. It's, it's such a good line, but I didn't, you know. Some of your albums you've put out in the last, I'm going to say, 20 years or so, like Tank Full of Blues and New York is My Home is one of my absolute favorites. I just love that entire album, especially the title track. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the title track, New York is My Home, and uh, what inspired that? It, I mean, it's just such a beautiful tune and certainly a great tribute to the city of New York. 
the thing is with New York is my home, that particular song, it's just that, you know, when 9-11 hit, I realized how much I love this city. I, I, I cried. I can't tell you. I, I There was one point I cried uncontrollably. I couldn't stop. Yeah. I, I just, I could not stop. And it was a great healing. But, and, and my friends are, that have gone to be with the Lord, you know, I, I felt like maybe they sent me this song because Doc Thomas and Lou Reed and, you know, they all had uh, such a, an influential part in my life. They were good friends. I felt like, in a way, as I was singing the song, I, I get into telling you why, but Doc Thomas wrote a song for me when I was a kid called Troubled Minds. It's probably on YouTube. But I started singing it because it was Lou Reed's favorite song. He asked for it in one of the last days on earth. And his, you know, while he was leaving us, yeah. He asked somebody to play it, I was told. He loved that song, Troubled Mind, so I started singing it, and all of a sudden, New York Is My Home came out. You know, it was the same chords. I can't explain. You know what I'm saying? The same, uh, yeah, same structure. Wow. And if you play guitar, you can prove it to yourself. Well, no, it's just, a, I mean, New York Is My Home is just such a beautiful tune and I mean um, like I said it's just amazing you and Paul just it, it's perfect I was, I was just wondering like did you initially hear Paul kind of on that or were you like uh, it's, it's just kind of amazing how that came together like that well we both love we both love this town when he did those concerts in Central Park he was trying to give a gift to the city when they you know when sometimes people get you know, to, to inspire people. Yeah. And and I, I felt like this song, you know, kind of, I, I wanted to inspire people with it, you know, to... Because I find beauty in all of it, whether it's the subway. Some people find beauty in the mountains of Colorado. Or, you know, and they sing about the western skies and... But me, I, you give me the, you give me all the cars and the soot and the subways and the buses and the, and, and, and I find beauty in the traffic and the and the and the, uh, the the traffic with the people or the or, or the streets. I hear music in it, so I I I had to write that, you know, the rooftops, the the streets. I find I. I my heart sings as I'm walking down these streets. Yeah. Because I'm a New Yorker. Now, I got friends from Florida come and go, how do you, how can you take that city? I have no idea what they see or feel. I have no idea. You know, they're from Texas. Right. They don't get it. And Chicago's like that, so you would know. Yes. <laughs> Okay, Dion, so your picture is on the front of the Beatles' Sgt. Pepper's album. <laughs> I mean, come on, most people would just be thrilled to have that happen, and I've always wanted to ask you how that felt. I don't think I've ever read anywhere where you've been asked before, like, what was your first reaction when you saw that you were on the front of the Sgt. Pepper's album? Well, <laughs> Uh, when I first saw it, I just, uh, you know, I'm from the Bronx. I started telling everybody, hey, if you want to sell a lot of albums, put my face on your album. Right. <laughs> there you go, right? <laughs> I said, you know, the Beatles would have never sold as many as they could. You know, I walked around with an attitude. But then later on, I started, you know, I started fleshing it out. I thought must be the time that I met John on 57th Street. He liked the song Ruby Baby. We 
bought the, you know, this was in February of, I think, 64. We, we bought the same leather jackets uh, in, in the store. Uh, he wore his on rubber sole. Uh, you know, they were kind of suede. I still have mine. It's a little stiff, but I still have it. Wow. But, uh, uh, yeah, I, I think it was that conversation that when they put out Sergeant Pepper, they cut out my head on the, the Ruby from the Ruby Baby cover. Well, Dion, thank you so much for talking to me today, man. You're a hero of mine. I grew up listening to your stuff. You're a pioneer of rock and roll, and it's a real honor to be talking to you. Thank you so much for the music, and uh, thanks for keeping the blues alive, too, and some of your newer stuff you've put out, like Tank Full of Blues and New York is My Home, and some of your releases you've put out in the last 20 years or so have been some of your best, for sure. Thanks, Todd. That's encouraging to hear. Thank you so much. Thanks again, Dion. I hope you go on and on forever, man. Keep giving us great music. Thanks, Todd. You stay well. (laughs) 